This is what Israel knows here. It's from a protection. Dead by the gun, them say, I was dead by the gun. You're, you're powerful, you know, come like next to God. And when people yeah, hear it, people have to back up, you know, you understand? Welcome to Kingston, Jamaica, where guns and gangs drive the drug trade. It's late afternoon in the heart of the Kingston ghetto, and local gunmen are tooling up to protect their turf. Today is a serious place, sir. Daily, you wake up and see people that are dead. So we are here them to protect ourselves. That man just come kill from the other side. Just like police job, jungle justice or deal with this, man. Yeah, so we kick it in Jamaica, come on, you hear that? Kingston is Jamaica's capital and largest city. Here, high levels of poverty and unemployment fuel the drug gangs. The most notorious gang in Jamaica is the Shower Posse. They have been key players in the drug and gun supply for over 30 years. Oh, they got everything. They got, they got all the money in the world. You know, these guys bring in containers of guns. They got missiles, all that. When they say jump, they say, oh, I. Curtis is working his way up the ranks in the Jamaican underworld. He now traffics cocaine for the shower posse. And he's always on call. They call me, I got a flight to tomorrow. And I got to do exactly what they said. They watch your car. They will come and kidnap your daughter. They will come and do anything necessary to get your attention, to tell you to do what you have to do for them. And they're not telling you. They're forcing you. The Shower Posse has a contract with Colombian and Mexican cartels to traffic cocaine into Jamaica. Seven of us take the plane together and go get the stuff and come back. Each one of us bring back 150 kilos in one week. According to Curtis, the Shower Posse holds power over the international airport. Well, in the plane line in Jamaica, it's well set up. They know I'm coming. Well, the X-ray machine, when you come up, they turn it off. Before you go to immigration, somebody there, see the number what on your ticket, and that number linked to that luggage, and they took that luggage away. That local luggage never go to custom. Custom never see that luggage. And it's all is going on to the back gate, and everybody on the payroll. If I don't make it back with their product, but my life is on the line. It can be all my family life, too. Successful seizures in Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic made Jamaica a preferred route for the cocaine traffickers. Jamaica provides a key stepping stone for the cartels, positioned halfway between Colombia and America, one of the key markets for the product. The Shower Posse established cells in New York, New Jersey, and Florida. Cocaine is trafficked here where it is exchanged for guns and cash. Cocaine gets shipped away all over. They go to England, you know, Brazil, you know, New York, Canada, wherever there's a need. Kingston sits on the southeast coast of Jamaica within a harbor. Its port is a major drug distribution hub. Because the port is in their backyard, the shower posse has people on the ground watching over things, making sure everyone is playing their role in the drug chain. When we have corrupted work, and it's easily. So when I work, I get in all $28,000 a month, and this cartel come and give me $100,000 for a week. Right away, you get corrupted. And when they finish that job, they say, when is the next job? So they're always there waiting for that day check again. Jamaican traffickers get paid in coke. This creates a domestic market on the island and a business opportunity for Curtis. Sometimes you get paid money, but sometimes you get paid in, in, in cocaine. It can be either 5% of the money or 10% of the product. If I take 50 kilo to America, 5 kilo is mine. If when I do get the product, I got my own distribution. I got my own to sell a little people there. But with a small man, it's difficult to get robbed, shot, dead, everything. Kingston is socially and geographically divided. The wealthy reside in the uptown hills, overlooking the poverty-stricken people living downtown. 
But when the cocaine came in, the powder goes up to the people that move to the highest class of the light powders. And so the powder come up here. The cracks stay downtown. But people downtown like they like crack more. Half the cocaine Curtis sells is cooked to make crack. He doesn't do this himself, but supplies the coke to those that do. Anybody that say drug money is easy money, they're a liar, man. It's a bloody gang. It's a kill or be killed gang. In the 80s, John was headhunted by the shower posse. He was flown to America to set up some of the first crack houses in New York City. He has now returned and is attempting to set up his own crack empire in downtown Kingston. This place, we don't do a much distribution here because once you start distribute, you start getting a clientele of fiends. And uh, when you get a clientele of fiends, it draw attention. What we really do here is uh, we cook the stuff and then my girl Joanne, she mostly bag the stuff. John and Joanne are building their business. They operate at mid-level, supplying crack to street-level dealers. Right now, we, we are at about a quarter of a key. We can, we're trying to get up to a key, you know. Right now, um, it's a shortage on it, so it probably got a little cut, see right there? I would leave that residue on the bag. Cocaine don't really stick to the bag, and it got a milky look to it. Cocaine mostly have a shiny crystal look to it. So that means it has been stepped on, you know. Over the years, John has perfected two ways of cooking crack using baking soda. His preferred method retains the potency of the drug. This is called a steam cooking. Add a tip of water to it. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start the melting process. We put the top on it. We're gonna let that cook a little. But what I find out is if you sell straight base crack, straight baking soda and powder, even though you might have to make your pieces smaller, you're going to gain the customer. Because instead of a five minutes eye, he's going to have a 10 minutes eye and he's going to appreciate that. You know, like my customers tell me, when they smoke my rock, their ears ring. You know, they hear that bell ringing, you know. Remember how murky the watch was? See how clear it is? Now look at the adjectives on top of it. So this been stepped on. Once dry, these rocks turn hard. The second method increases the amount of crack produced, but loses quality. Instead of steaming the coke, John prepares it in a microwave. Modern technology. <laughs> see how oily that is? Now, you see that vapor? That's what we're losing. So what I'm gonna do is whip it. See how big that rock is? So you see how profitable it is. Comparing to what we just did, it's about the same amount of dough, but it's more baking soda. Uh, in terms of making money, you know, for me, I want to put a name out there, like a brand name, you know? So I try to stick with the steam cooking. Pretty soon, we're going to conquer the market. And our protection is very strong. We've got a very, very powerful army behind us. You know, we're not trying to step on nobody's toe, but anybody step on our toe, we're going to take their turf. The turf wars are between different areas, aptly named garrisons. These are ghetto neighborhoods such as Trenchtown, home to reggae legend Bob Marley, and Tivoli Gardens, the home of the shower posse. In the 70s, Jamaica's two political parties began arming and paying different gangs in return for votes. Those who backed the winning party got housing, jobs, and resources. Those on the losing side got nothing. The violent divisions continue today. With weapons and patronage of politicians, these gangs increasingly compete over drug turf. Being a member of the Shaw Posse, I get my respect. You know, if I have a problem with a guy in a certain area, what I do, I go to his don first. Each garrison is ruled by a don. Those at the top are mafia godfather-like figures known as megadons. They have power across different garrisons. But more common are community dons, 
Similar to neighborhood mafia bosses, they control the drug trade within the garrison. They mediate in drug and community disputes and deal out punishment for those breaking the rules of the street. This enforcement on the ground is overseen by a lower ranking street don. When terror force had anybody from two street back from the street passed it, either kill them or take them away. Devlin controls four roads on behalf of his community don, two miles away from the shower posse. We have many we have where you make money. So we have all the drugs BSS, so we have weed BSS. We spent two million dollars. Me and we get our three kilo of cocaine. We spent 200,000. We get our a nice 50 pound of weed. In the community, you know, one sees a dan, they get a lot of respect from people. We show drugs, we rap people, but we use the wrong things and turn it into good things in our community. We take care of kids, uniform, lunch money, elder people in the community. They have the money for cook to them and they don't the drugs money, we can't take care of them. When them come to us and need anything, we we'll not turn them down. The more time them even go to the politician, them and them not get it. The gangs have become less dependent on their politicians for income. It's now largely generated by drugs. And for this, Devlin has 100 armed enforcers. I first pick up a gun, man, I'm 14 year old. And I float, me no one start squeeze she got. When you bust this, this come like a ranch rolling out the jungle. Shake out the place. It's all about the browning, because it protects me all the time. Without it, I don't have no life. So well, my woman, this like my girl, no? Sleep with it, eat with it, drink with it. Life right. come like nothing. Life come like one of this. I'm gonna write your name for one, you know? My family was dead by the gun in it. So I put my mind to it and I start kill people daily. When the drugs are out, there's more money. They might buy a beer gun. Politicians, sometimes they run money for us to buy a gunshot. And sometimes we have to chump up money for sale. Here, the gangs use marijuana as currency on the street to buy guns and bullets. We have to go in our country cycle, link all some weed on my farm. So we get some ganja. Come back up and try to with some ganja for sale to buy some gunshot. They also rob rival gangs. One time we just go on the street and just rob ourselves some weed and just come back in and just buy a half box of shot. With weed being the criminal currency to buy arms and ammunition, the police have adopted a zero tolerance response to ganja and the gangs. In the southeast of Kingston, special armed units prepare to combat this across the city. An elite Jamaican police unit is getting ready to patrol Kingston's violent ghetto neighborhoods. We are the tip of the spear when it comes to dealing with dangerous criminality. As of the start of criminality that we have to face, we have to make certain that we have what we consider the best weapon for urban combat situations. The best stopping power would be the M16 assault rifle. The firearms of the criminals are traded for drugs such as marijuana and this exchange for drugs, the receipt of firearms, the enforcement of the drug trade, this perpetuates the cycle of violence and that is what, primarily what we are trying to break. We provide hostage rescue, we provide special patrols and Culturally, we are the military arm of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Most of Dean's unit work tackling the garrison drug gangs. There are 39 garrisons across Kingston, and many are ruled like a state within a state. While Dean's team prepares to hit the streets, 
Gang members are out policing their borders. Inside the garrison, they are the law. They are preparing to keep their enemies out, and that includes the police. Different with community. Because of garrison, you know, it's coming like I don't have the Middle East. What the fittest of the fittest survive, and we are always fit, so we have to survive. Police are our enemy, man. Biggest enemy, more than even our enemy, enemy. You know, this community, yeah. we don't work with police. The oldest lady in the community, she don't work with police. She work with we, because we serve police. We have our own sergeant, we have our own lieutenant, we have our own commissioner of police. We have our roles here. There is no robbery, no rape, no shot broken, no petty thief. You can't deal with none of them things there. You get the real garrison treatment of laws. You understand? Because of our own community justice way. Because once the community say, enough for you, enough for you. Most of the world, as I mentioned, is in a turf. A man take a man pee. A man take a man strappings. A man take a man weed or coke. So we put the barriers up to make sure that our enemy them can't come through. If you pass, they say you have a drop. I mean, you have drive by, go around your regular enemy. If a man put them things on film window, they come to your community and spray all five, six, seven, eight, nine innocent people. We can't afford for that. The way we love our community. I want to know them protect our people them is by put up some barrel and make sure they're safe. In return, the Dons and gangs are afforded protection from the community. If the Don system is threatened, some of the residents will fight to the death to preserve it. In 2010, America called for the extradition of Shower Posse Megadon, Michael Dudas Koch, who was wanted on drug trafficking charges. We were the key players, in fact, this, this spearhead, along with the military, in that operation. Faced with losing their Don, considered by many in the community to be its greatest champion and benefactor, local residents erected barricades and prepared to fight. We expected nothing short of a small war. They were able to defend against the police and military in a very intense and massive operation. A mil military force that was defending the area in terms of keeping the Don from being extradited to the United States. Dudas provided medicine, tuition, and free electricity to the residents, helping keep poverty at bay. Many in the community believed that they were not just fighting for their Don, but for their very own existence. It was reported that over 70 people were killed, but the figure is believed by some to be over 200. Dudas escaped during the initial battle, but he was eventually arrested and extradited to the United States. Although Dudas is gone, the bullet holes remain. His vacuum has already been filled, and there are plenty of other dons for Dean's unit to tackle. We're heading to Rose Town, which is a part of the Kingston Western Division. Uh, the same division has Tivoli Gardens. Gang operating there is under the dance performance, presently in police custody, and he's been, he's been charged and investigated for various crimes. There were shootings and at least one murder. We expect to find persons possibly with a cache of dangerous drugs or possibly weapons and ammunition. Typical foot patrol in an inner city community. Once they come off the vehicles, they are able to go through the many pathways, alleys and so on to converse with the people or to search somebody, check for criminality, um, persons with weapons, and drugs. As Dean's officers frisk several residents, news travels fast that they are in the area. But for some, it's not fast enough. The unit's patience pays off, and they arrest a suspect for possession of drugs. The officers will have to ask the local police to collect the suspect so they can continue with their patrol.
they are told they'll have to wait to see if a unit is available. They're exposed on the streets and their presence could lead to a volatile situation. It's a very tense wait. Finally, they get the go ahead to take the suspect to the local police station themselves, avoiding a confrontation on the street this time. As you can see, there are a lot of kids playing along the streets. We have to always say that into consideration because when you decide to use that firearm and fire that round, there is no way you can call it back. And we would not like to endanger anyone's life. Me personally, that decision has been made on my part. Luckily for me, there was no collateral damage. It's sad to say, um, other situations you know, might not have turned out that good. The concerns of society about the high rate of police shootings, and especially fatal ones, is not lost on the, on the police force, and most critically, its members on the ground. But the use of force policy clearly states that lethal force may be used if no other method can reasonably resolve that particular situation. And if a man is firing at you, then words will, could not reasonably stop a man from doing that. While some of the team remain in Rosetown, Dean's other officers begin to patrol a nearby garrison in Payne Avenue. As a father of young men and women that age, I see the, the eyes of my children in each face. And as a result, I have to make certain that my guidance is effective enough and efficient enough for them to be able to carry out the tasks that they are given to do so safely, but most critically, to keep the society that they are serving as safe as possible. Not only do the officers face danger on the street, they can also be vulnerable to lucrative offers from drug dons. We have to make certain that our officers are above board to keep away from the lure of corruption. Quite a bit can be offered from these people, but I can show you that we are taking the steps to deal with corruption. But some slip through the net. I have good cop, I have bad cop. Bad cop make you know, a police are gonna come. They don't have to be a cigarette to they clean it up. The politician them more with a vote. The police them is all about the money game. You see me? Because some of the Dons are able to keep their drug bases open, they are able to provide for their residents. Clive lives in Rockford Garrison on the east side of Kingston. He resides in a Jamaican tenement yard similar to a commune. That's a bathroom and toilet. You know, this is my brother's house. What credit for living here? <laughs> you have to live. Many of them use marijuana to take their mind off poverty. Sometimes you get some good quality, sometimes not. Can say me smoke too much. We are reading Jamaica coming like at the start of our life. You know? You know, everybody have to smoke a weed spiff right now. All the policemen too, you know. This is a good brand. Why it ties? Put on the look of fire up and you grab a, grab a, um, a tobacco. Tobacco, flavor him up. Like I seize up the meat, straight to the brain. Half you have to grab a knife. Some people are addicted to it. Call me too. Mm. Yeah. Nice, man. I said, we know. Really? Yeah, nice, man. Nice, man. The night time before you go to sleep, you have to go to sleep. You have to go to sleep. You have to go to You can't survive.
Although born here in Kingston, in his 20s, Clive went to the United States to try to escape the poverty. I left Jamaica to America for a better life. And it was South and South, concrete up there, on the street. I meet people, got to know people. You know, started to sell pounds from nickel bag. Sometimes I sell like 200 pounds a week. So if you have this concrete, it's, it's no problem. You could sell that easy. After 15 years of dealing in New York, Clive was busted. He spent another 15 years in prison before being deported back to Jamaica. When you get deported, people don't respect you no more. Say they call it a waste man. <laughs> they say you waste time. I've been there two years now trying to get a job. And it's hard. Yeah, if I can't get a job, I'm going to have to do something to live. Well, now it's about survival. Now I'm going to survive if I have no money. To survive the poverty and violence, many people in Kingston traveled to the coast to work in Jamaica's tourist industry. This is one of the country's largest legitimate industries, employing over 200,000 Jamaicans. 110 miles from Kingston on the northern coast is Montego Bay. Its golden sandy beaches reflect the paradise image the island is famous for. For those looking to escape the drug culture of Kingston, it offers hope. But when they arrive, they find that another drug dominates these shores. Jamaica is high grade when it comes down to drugs. We have the best marijuana, we have the best cocaine, we have the best ecstasy. Courtney moved up from Kingston two years ago. He used to work in the bars and clubs, but now has found a new way to make money. It's the weekend, and Courtney is checking he has enough pills for tonight. He claims he's the go-to man when it comes to ecstasy in Montego Bay. Ecstasy so was something that was initially introduced to the Jamaicans by the tourists. And they request these things, and we don't know what it is, so we make contacts and links, and then we start to supply it. The Americans like it, so does the Europeans, but it's mostly American college students. All of these are ecstasies. The eagle is what everybody wants. It has a like Egyptian face. Bends are common, but they're like outdated. It's not as hype as these. They enhance people's party mood. It, it also stimulates sexual activities. It's like an aphrodisiac. In Montego Bay, the club culture is influenced by expat Jamaicans involved in the US and UK club scenes. So instead of weed, ecstasy is the drug of choice. Drugs at night is one of the most common things in the streets, like sex and music. So ecstasy is really for the younger generation and the party generation. I am very frisky in the streets, meaning I socialize with a lot of different people. So all the big guys that sell this stuff that don't go in the streets, they need us. They need people in the middle that will bring them deals, bring them people that want stuff. The person over here, which is the buyer, he pays me to go to the dealer. So I get a tip from him, and the dealer gives me a tip for making him make a deal. So I make double. The locals, it's a standard price. Uh, 25 in American money. And for tourists, I would normally make a deal. Because they travel all over the world, they pay different prices. So sometimes when you tell them a small price, they're willing to pay you more. Yeah, people don't want so. Courtney is topping his supply up for the evening ahead. Give me about six of them. I meet at the corner. In my heart, I sell hoping I don't hurt no one. Knowing it will, indirectly, but on that, on that respect, when I give it to them, I even suggest, hey, you know it's bad for you. I would appreciate if the Jamaican people go back to good old white room and ganja for their vibes. Everybody got a vice, but good old ganja and white room. Let's stick to what we know. Although ecstasy is spreading to Kingston, many there still prefer a more natural high. Cocaine, me not know about that. Heroin, me not know about that. 
two pound of weed, me know about that. Major Mackerel is one of Jamaica's most famous reggae dancehall artists. For him, marijuana and work go hand in hand. Weed have to go with the music because the two of them blend. When you smoke the weed and you're going to the studio for the record, your mind is at, is at ease because you have that spiritual sacrament inside of you. You feel more vibes. It, it, it energizes you to do more. Major Mackerel is one of over 29,000 in Jamaica who follow the Rastafarian religion. Many of them see marijuana as an herb, not a drug. Philosophy and the system of Rastafarian, we does not believe in alcohol and chemical. The herbs that grow in um, Europe under the light and they have to add the chemical to it, those weed are drugs. The weed in Jamaica is not drugs. It grows natural from the earth, so the weed here kind of better than most of the other herbs then. Weed isn't just used by musicians and rosters. For many in Kingston, it's part of their nightlife. So Wednesday night party that's been going on for 12, 13 years. Who is somebody come here? Who want to see somebody come here? Who want to be somebody come here? And you know, it's just a party. Weed and music is not something that you can move out of Jamaica. The two of them is a part of the culture. Is a part of the history. You will see people smoking weed. No drugs in there, you know, because in Jamaica we don't want to weed as drugs. It's a the herbs is very good in Jamaica, but the problem what we have. If I have a, a roach like this and the police see me on the street, he might arrest me and lock me up. The police have zero tolerance towards smokers. This is because criminal gangs control the large-scale production and distribution on the island. Despite fiscal constraints on the police, eradication efforts continue. Marijuana remains the lifeblood of the gangs who compete violently for this lucrative trade. Gangs are a major concern as it relates to the murders within the country. And we believe that if we are, are able to eradicate um, the gangs in the field, then we'll greatly reduce their chance to create mayhem. The ganja has been illegal in Jamaica since 1930. It's not legal for you to have ganja in your position at all. Even a seed is illegal to have any part of the ganja. Swearing's team is targeting a ganja field 80 miles from Kingston. The local farmer will grow the weed, and then the gangs will traffic it back to the city. This field has been purpose-built in the swamps, which provides plenty of water for much-needed irrigation. And what the farmers will do, they'll take mud, and they'll pile the mud on top of each other until they have a hard surface. And from that hard surface, they'll then plant the ganja on, on those strips of land. Operating the sums, you have to be very careful, because sometimes there's a possibility if you don't step carefully, then you might sink within the stone. If the plant is of a certain maturity, it's, it's no use to anybody when it is cut. So we do, we just leave it in the fields. If it is a, it's a stage where it can be used, then we take it back. If I would say we're losing or winning, it's our experience that we have been to eras that we have already reaped and destroyed and their new growth. So it's a, it's, a, it's a cycle that continues. Jamaica's hot climate and rich soil provide some of the best places to grow marijuana. While the drug is grown all over the island, much of Kingston weed comes from the central mountainous areas. The isolation in the hills provides excellent cover for the farmers, but they are constantly at risk. Sometimes we plant it here. You see the helicopter come, our police, but when they come, we got to run, you know. It's 
There's a lot of risk you're running out. Sometimes you have people, they send police on you. I never get in trouble for it yet. With Jamaica's depressed economy, local farmers are turning to weed to supplement growing the rest of their produce. We sell a little bit of the food, but we use the herb as bigger living, you know? This plant is tobacco, and this plant is corn. You know, and we have a few stock of Kalalu, and this is my plant of herb. So we just grow everything together, you know? But Peter's harvest is never guaranteed. September, October, hurricane, beat it up, blow it down the ground, dirty it up, it can't really work. Rain, rotten it off, sometimes you got a month rain, and it is reaping time, you lose all your feel. We got to be tender with it, you know, it's a tender caring thing, you know. We go indica, skunk. Indica skunk is known for its robustness. It grows faster than other taller strains of marijuana. This strain, what I'm looking after right now, we call this one the white ice. Going good and nice. Peter's white ice takes the same time to mature as his indica skunk. Although they are smaller plants, they produce the same strength marijuana. The white ice is hybrid. It gives you a good smoke. When you got this one, smoking this one, you just feel nice. The female one is the best part of the herb. This one, look at it. You see these little seeds? That is the male. So I got to take it out because we don't want them to damage the female. This female, just look at it. See, it, it don't carry any seed, it carry bud. So when you grow it without seed, you grow in quality. That is the real sense in me now. In the street, man, we're talking about Kingston, the garrison place. They don't want to rub it in so in there and are cutting it and see this lots of seed. They say it's bush. And throw it away, you know? Once this quality wheat is in Kingston, it's distributed from rum shacks and food shops across the city. Street dealer Anthony is heading to meet his wholesale weed distributor to restock his supply. In Kingston's market, large-scale marijuana sales are controlled by the shower posse. They sell to street dealers like Anthony, who come to buy weed alongside legitimate goods and produce. We get in the, in the market. Much better because you have food and all these things taken away the scent from it, you understand? Know, Anthony comes to one of the secluded yards in the market. Yes, my dog, so I want to go to Here he can check the product and prices with his regular supplier. That's why I'm about to go with it. So I'm about to go with it. So I'm about to go with it. You see that one now? I even more volume more than I want to go better grade. You get me? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, these are the purple skunk, you know, these are the called icy, you know. I'm going to stay in the corner, you know, where the people them come and get it. It's a 50 bag or a 20 bag or a 100 bag. That's the way I do it. Retail it out. When I buy it on a stick like this, I prefer it, because when it cut down, you can't get any type of herb. Mix up together. On the stick like this, you know, you're getting the real stuff. So when you come and want a stiff and bite, you have to just pick it off and the sticks like this, you know? Pop it off. Just like that, you know? Pick it off again. And you put it in your hand and you just roll it up. Crush out just like that. And you get it in a whiz and you just peel it up. Just like that, you know, my boss? Yeah, for real. Yeah, it have a little texture about it. I'm get like this now and burn a split. You know, when it lick out the heavens, they say, yeah. What a nice little yeah. rest for the day, you understand me? Where is the most important for this? Yeah, don't know, you're important for that, you know, 7,000, I'm important for that, you know. I don't know, I get us by thing, I get the drift. Yeah. Yeah. Marijuana, straight to the brain, you know. Ah, you know? So we yeah. know, uh, two pounds of that one, yeah. Yeah. I take a pound of the low stuff still, you know? Yeah. Real, 
he decides to buy three pounds. So Anthony will now have quality weed to sell to his customers. While some in Jamaica see weed as a soft drug, for others, it leads to taking harder drugs. I'm actually in love with crack. Crack is like my girl. It started from ganja. Ganja is a gateway drug. When you smoke it with the cork. In Jamaica, they call it season split. It's like you cook it and you season it. After trying cocaine and ganja, Orville now only smokes crack to get his fix. You have some of them, when I cook it, they put rum in it. I get a headache. Because the rum is a depressant, and the coke is a upper. So it's like them I cancel each other out, up and down. This, some people sell it for four. If them don't know it, it's $5. Orville hasn't always been a crack addict. He used to mix with the uptown crowd using powder cocaine. I never used to smoke coke. I used to sniff coke. And that was the, you know, the end thing. It made me feel like I, like I belong. Used to be this girl, but she started explaining to me that she cooked it up. And then I tried it, and from that day I liked it. I was selling crack to support my habit, basically. The profit I was smart. Orville is now an addict with a $70 a day habit. When I take a light, it's like I take a flight. I find out that let up a pleasure in your mind, door for me, or make you feel good. I don't even want a girl. I just want to wake up, eat, smoke. You see, if we do something wrong when you smoke this, your subconscious would mess with you. If we steal to get the money to smoke, you're going to feel police is after you. If you work for the money, you will enjoy your light. If you steal for it, you're going to be Sit in there. The out there. Your conscience. Cocaine did a whole lot of this. Right now, my teeth. This. I wouldn't even give this to my enemy. I go and dig a hole one day and bury it. Oh. Last time I come down here was about. 13 years. My star come back to the water. The water they make me feel revived. It's not the coca. The maker is a paradise. Everything is here already. It's just that we make it what it is. <laughs> 